I work for a local refrigeration company in southeast Mississippi and uh, we do quite a bit of refrigeration as you can imagine and uh, I've been trying to figure out what to do with these old drums whenever we're done with them that hold the refrigerant. Uh, there's not really much of an application for them. You can't take them to a scrap yard. If you do they don't give you anything for them because of the plain simple fact it's a tank. Um, and, and they have to go through certain safety requirements and uh, such as that in order to uh, dispose of them. You can't put them in your local uh, trash because uh, they, they can't take them because of the metal because the, it may have pressure left on it or something like that and a lot of people don't really realize how to discharge everything but I've, I've, I think I've come up with an idea. I've been uh, noticing some YouTube videos on batch water heaters uh, solar water heaters that are uh, preheaters for their uh, water heating system in their home and uh, they've been pretty standard on building their their casings and uh, I went to Lowe's and picked up some material and I built a casing which is uh, about uh, two and a half feet wide about three feet tall in the rear about two feet tall in the front but uh, I, I put it all together I've got about fifty five sixty dollars tied up and everything and I utilize some of these old uh, 30 pound cylinders that we carry the refrigerant in, the stored in. Uh, I've tied them all together using copper tubing and a manifold that I built and uh, drilled into the tanks and, and mounted everything to it. Uh, well, excuse me, welded everything to it. Um, but I wanted to show a real quick temp reading because I've actually got this sitting in the sun. It's been sitting out here for a while. But uh, within the first hour of uh, being in the sun, the unit was up to about 160 degrees. And right now, if you can see this, uh, I'm actually measuring my probe is inside this manifold going to the tanks. And uh, I'm showing 200 degrees. Uh, and it's, if I would take it off of Celsius, it would be, there we go. About 95 degrees, 96, let's see, yeah, I don't think it's quite that warm, we might be a couple of degrees off, I figure it's probably somewhere around 95 degrees right now, I'm standing in direct sun, but either way you can see, uh, it's we're showing 200 degrees here, and uh, showing close, close to 100, or right at 100 degrees. Uh, in the sun, and my probe's really cro close to this box too. So, let's see if I can get a little bit. I think that made it hotter. <laughs> That's showing about 102 degrees in the direct sun right now, which is is a little off. I need to calibrate that meter slightly. But uh, I wanted to give a little more idea of what we've got going on here. So I'm gonna pull these out of the way. Let them go ahead and continue to read. But uh, let me go ahead and start with my glasses. Uh, it's actually an old refrigerated base uh, sneeze guard from a Subway restaurant. Um, it has a gasket on it that uh, worked out pretty good. So, uh, and of course, the top and the bottom of my glass is a little too long for my box. So what I did is I mounted some uh, foam tape on the inside of the glass uh, just underneath it here that actually seals it to the box. Uh, and keep in mind, I'm at 200 degrees. It reached that temperature. We're in direct sunlight. It reached that temperature within about an hour and a half of uh, being in the sun. I don't have any water in it. Of course, the water's going to cool it. It's a little hard to open because uh, it sticks to the box real good once it gets good and hot. There we go. Oh, the heat. Wow, that's that's really intense. But uh, I'm trying to I'm gonna try to get close enough to this where I can get a little bit of an explanation as to what I've done here. But I made my manifolds out of three quarter inch copper tubing, and uh, I've got one manifold and the one you see, um, which is let's see if I can touch this, I'm probably gonna burn myself here. But uh, this this part of the manifold here, yeah, that's pretty warm, uh, is the actual water inlet, and uh, they're tied to three eighths tubing that goes to the bottom of the drum. And curves in slightly so it feeds the water into the bottom of the drum and the tubing here is uh, coming out of the top of the drum on each drum a little better picture of it there for you but I cut all the handles off cut all the valves off with a grinder and soldered the uh, tubing into place or brazed it rather uh, however you want to call it 
it's welded in place and I've, I've pressure tested this to, to about 400 psi I don't have any leaks uh, I was a little concerned about the uh, pop-offs on the uh, tanks themselves I found out that this is um, these are rated to blow off at around 410 psi so I was pushing it and didn't realize it but um, that's a safety feature built into the tanks which I don't think under normal operation uh, that'll ever reach that PSI. Plus you can take into account uh, anytime you're going to plumb anything like this where it's going to be heated you're going to want to pop off valve of some sort on it and I figured that would be best located once I penetrate the box that would be best located outside for service purposes. But I've uh, lined the inside of my box with uh, what they call duck board in the industry which is uh, it's uh, it's a HVAC product that's used on a regular basis to build ducking in houses for plenums and such as that but it's about three quarters of an inch thick pretty dense uh, insulation it's got a, a foil backing on it that that provides a very reflective surface inside the box to reflect the heat from the sun and uh, I've painted the tanks and manifolds black to absorb that radiation that heat so uh, right now uh, like I say I haven't completely sealed the box it's uh, I'd say probably about 90% sealed. I'm going to go through and uh, I've got some gaps and things of that nature that I want to go through and uh, just put a good bead of silicone in these and make sure everything's sealed up so I don't have any heat loss. But uh, I tested it yesterday in the evening sun. It was up to about 153 degrees within about two hours operation. But I wanted to see if I could get a little hotter than that and today I surely did. I, I put it in the sun and uh, like I say we're up to 200 degrees right now of course I've had it open it's not going to be that hot but the reasoning behind using the smaller tanks versus one large tank is to uh, hopefully be able to uh, rapidly heat larger amounts of water and uh, have it at a, at a more usable flow versus having to wait on it to heat up but uh, I'd say within the next week or so we're going to install this unit find a good location in the yard to place it uh, and see how it does. I've heard different reports on saving as much as fifty to um, sixty dollars per month on energy costs in the home based on uh, preheating the water with a solar water heater. So I'm going to give it a shot and give everybody a report. I'm going to do about a three-month report, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. Uh, appreciate you watching my videos.